When Columbus first landed in Puerto Rico in 1493, the island was home to 30 to 60 thousands of inhabitants that we now refer to as Taino Indians. The Tainos can be traced back to the Orinoco River in Venezuela, from where they eventually spread into the Caribbean. Columbus described these inhabitants as being extremely kind. They traded with us and gave us everything they had with goodwill. They took great delight in pleasing us. They are very gentle and without knowledge of what is evil, nor do they murder or steal. Your Highness may believe that in all the world there could be no better people. The Taino influence is still strong on the island today, not just in the culture, but also in the DNA of the Puerto Rican people. The Tainos called the island they inhabited Borinquen. Puerto Ricans often refer to themselves as Boricua, which is basically another way to call themselves Taino. Columbus named the island San Juan Bautista. One of his officers, Juan Pose de Leon, founded the first Spanish settlement, Capara, in 1508 in what is known today as Guanabo. Ponce de Leon would later serve as the governor of the island. And yes, this was the guy who was looking for the fountain of youth in Florida. Spanish colonization on the island brought with it smallpox and other diseases that took a heavy burden on the Taino population on the island. There was also a period of slavery of the native people as the Spanish used them to mine for gold and other resources. This was made illegal by the Spanish crown in 1512 but took longer to end. As the Taino slaves were phased out, they were replaced by African slaves as the transatlantic slave trade took hold in the Americas. In the next several centuries, as European colonial powers fought to gain control of the West Indies, Puerto Rico became a hotspot for battles between the Spanish and other powers that sought to gain a foothold on the island. You can see the scars of these battles in the fort known as El Morro and Old San Juan. In the late 1800s, the United States had been growing in power and had sought to increase their influence in the region. By 1898, the U.S., who had been trying to buy Cuba and Puerto Rico from Spain, decided to take action by assisting Cuban independence fighters against the Spanish. This started the Spanish-American War, which lasted around three months. At the end of the war, a peace treaty signed in Paris gave Cuba its quote-unquote independence. Spain ceded Puerto Rico, Guam, and the Philippines to the United States. The current Puerto Rico flag was designed during this period, perhaps by anti-Spanish revolutionaries based in New York. It is for this reason that Cuban and Puerto Rican flags are identical with reverse colors. In 1900, the U.S.-based Foraker Act granted Puerto Rico limited local government. This limited government had a governor and an executive council appointed by the U.S. president. This government consisted of Anglo-Americans. Puerto Rico wouldn't have a native governor until 1948, when Luis Muñez Marín became the first democratically elected governor of the island. Puerto Rico also gained a commissioner non-voting member of the U.S. Congress and a Puerto Rico Supreme Court to align the legal code with the United States. There were also American investments on the island. In 1917, the Jones Act granted all Puerto Ricans born after 1898 U.S. citizenship. Many say it was only done to draft Puerto Ricans into World War I. Over the next decades, Puerto Ricans have wrestled with both attempts at independence and appeals at statehood. A number of referendums have been held, but none have held any sway. Today, Puerto Rico is trying to recover from economic decline, debt crisis, and Hurricane Maria that decimated the island in 2017. Puerto Rico has also been facing a brain drain of some of its best educated to the mainland. It has doubled the unemployment rates than that of the mainland. 
The average income levels in Puerto Rico are half of the income rates in the poorest state in the U.S., Mississippi. In this context, Puerto Rico has been trying to use its in-between status to its advantage to stimulate economic growth through activities such as Act 60 and other acts. If you found value in this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe and like button. Thank you for listening.